My name is Topher. Um, I have a bunch of credentials. I've done a bunch of stuff in WordPress. If you really want to know all about me, the internet is there for your perusal. Um, my day job is WordPress developer. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, you can see my Twitter handle here. Um, I work for XWP, also known as XTeam. Here's our cool website. We have a culture of superheroes. Once you have been part of the company for a while and you have shown yourself to be capable of being really awesome, the company heroizes you. And you spend some quality time with a designer and the, they learn about who you are and, and what you like, what you do, and they create a persona. And uh, heroized.com has a gallery of all of the X-Team superheroes. And you can go through and see who's good at what. Um, additionally, you can go and fill out a form and have a hero created for yourself. Or for your company, you could commission heroes being made for each of your employees. However, I am not here today as part of XWP or X-Team. I also make tutorial videos for OS training. And uh, Steve, the guy that owns it, is from Sarasota, not very far from here. He said, hey, why don't you come down? I said, okay. And here I am. Um, so I have him to thank for getting me here today. We're going to talk about WordPress data filtering. <clears throat> the original title was The Great Escape but it didn't get written on the schedule, so now it's WordPress data filtering, which is much more boring. Uh, who here is not a developer? All right. Of those people, who has no interest in ever becoming a developer? All right, this talk may bore you to tears. Um, however, <coughs> If you ever intend to employ a developer, you should ask them some rather pointed questions about this topic, because they should know it. Um, how many people have ever written anything serious in PHP that is not WordPress, or Drupal, or Joomla, just from scratch? All right, you know what the mail function is, right? How many people remember the day that the world figured out how hackable the mail function is? Ah, see, I remember that day very, very well. Uh, my inbox blew up. People were angry with me. Months later, after I thought it had all been figured out, clients I forgot about were angry with me. So for those who don't remember, here's the story. PHP has a function called mail. You give it a to address, a from address, a subject, a body, and it sends email for you. It's wonderful. It's easy. However, you can kind of drop whatever you want into that function and email everyone in the whole wide world. Whatever spam you want. And it's really, really easy to do. Unless the person writing the application checks the input on that function to see if it's good or not. What ended up happening is there, be, there came about a bunch of libraries wrapped around the mail function to do all this stuff for you so that it would check to see if you have a valid email address or whatever. WordPress does a lot of this stuff as well. But once you start writing your own plugins, uh, themes, whatever, you need to employ the tools that WordPress provides for you to make sure that you're taking good input from your users and you're outputting what you think you're outputting. Because that's the most embarrassing, when you're outputting things that you really don't want to be, things that are going to hurt your users. It makes you look really bad. It's, it makes you feel really bad when their computer melts down. You don't want that. So what are we fixing? Input and output. Blocking attacks from malicious jerks. People are going to be attacking your site. All the time, every day, it never stops ever. Just go into website ownership with that in mind. People are going to be attacking your site all day, every day, and it will never stop. 
But you're also checking for mistakes from valid users. People forget to put the dot in front of the com all the time. Putting in a web address, they forget the colon in the HTTP. Um, you want to be able to say, hey, wait a second, that's not right. I don't want to have that bad information in my database. And you can do whatever you want. You can go back to the user and say, sorry, you need to refill out this form. Or you can just throw it away, whatever, I don't care. You don't want to take bad data. Output. Say somebody gets something into your database. You don't want to push that out to your website. You can scrub that before you send the data out. So even if you get hacked and you get some bad data in your database, if you code your output properly, you're not going to push that back out to your users. And again, improperly structured data. So even if your form allows somebody to forget the dot in dot com, you don't have to push that out on your staff list and look like an idiot. You can say, oh wait, there's no dot there. This is not an email address. We're not gonna print this. And then the president calls and says, hey, how come my email address isn't on the website? You say, well, you typed it wrong. What is your email address? Which you should know because he's the president. Terminology. I always forget, am I validating or am I escaping? And eventually I figured out it's like prison. You always wanna escape output. You want to validate input. Somebody giving you information, you want to validate. Is this really a zip code? Is this really an email address? Is it really a web address? Is it really a paragraph of plain text? Or is there JavaScript in there? What is this stuff you're giving me? You want to validate that. Escaping, you want to... There's a specific reason it's called escaping. You want to output the data, but then you also want to convert anything dangerous to something not dangerous. Um, so say you have uh, some HTML. Escaping it is going to turn the angle brackets into escape codes. They're gonna be and GLT semicolon. And L, oh, I don't remember what they are. I don't care. Um, and so there's, there's two ways to handle your output. You can escape it, which makes it safe but ugly. People are like, whoa, why is there HTML on my page? Or you can remove it. And that's entirely up to you how you want to handle that information. So validate input. Check everything. There's a link here, which I'm going to go to. Boop. Most WordPress functions for validating input start with the word sanitize. Sanitize title. What sanitize title does is take a string, lowercase it, remove the space or replace the spaces with hyphens, and get rid of any weird entities. Basically, it makes a slug. Sanitize user. That does a whole bunch of stuff, which I will let you read about. Um, balance tags. So if you make an anchor to something and you forget the closing anchor, it'll throw one in there for you. I don't necessarily know where, but you will get balanced a balanced DOM so that it doesn't freak out your JavaScript somewhere else in the page. Um, sanitize HTML class. So you're putting some classes into a div or on the body, and you want to make sure that nobody's sliding a little JavaScript in there. You wrap each class word in sanitize HTML class, and you can be sure that you're going to get what you expect. Is email is another great one. This is actually not necessarily a sanitization uh, function, but it works as one. You just give it an email address, and if it's not an email address, you get false back. Uh, and then array map is wonderful. Array map will allow you to use a sanitization function on every element in an array. So if you have a hundred first names in an array, you can say run through all of them and make sure none of them are JavaScript. Escape output. No evil code, no broken links, no bad images, etc. Right next to this other page, output sanitization. Some wonderful stuff in here. Int val, absint, wp kisses or kss, depending on how you say it. Anybody have opinions? Kisses or kss, what is it? All right, there you go. 
Um, a lot of them start with escape, escape HTML, escape HTML, but translate and encode, blah, blah, blah. Um, we'll go over some of these here in a few minutes. Next page, vocabulary. They're both part, oh, both part of this page, which is data validation. In my opinion, if you are writing WordPress code, you should read every single word of this page. And you should become intimately familiar with every tag on here. So why am I standing here at WordCamp telling you, go read the codex? You could have done that on your own. And the key is whoop, the secret sauce. It's actually harder than you, could, than you might expect to know which of these tags to use at just the right time. Some of them are slower than others because they're more powerful. They take more time to do stuff. You want to use the fastest one that still does what you need to get done. That's what I'm really going to be talking about. Abs int forces a variable to be a non-negative integer. So think about that. There's another one called int val, which is at the top here. Whoop. Similar, if it's supposed to be an integer, cast it as one. So I'm sure you're aware in PHP, you can wrap the number one in quotes and it's going to be a string. Well, absent and inval will say, no, this is an integer. Absent forces non-negative. But if you pass this a string, you're going to get zero. And so if you have a field that you know should be a number. Some jerk passes in JavaScript, boop, you have zero. Just like that, that whole attack is just gone. Um, but you need to know, do you want invalid or do you want absent? Does it have to be non-negative? Because if you use absent and somebody passes in a valid negative two, you're gonna get zero. You don't want that. Um, so you have to think carefully about what you're doing with numbers. Uh, I struggled for a long time with zip codes because I wanted so much to just wrap it in absent. But you can't because American zip codes often have a hyphen. Canadian zip codes have letters and spaces. Pain in the butt. Um, so you have to think about doing a test. Is this an American zip code? Yes. Okay. Split it on hyphen. Now wrap the two pieces in absent. Then stick them back together. Then test. Do we have lots and lots of zeros? Not a valid zip code, throw it away. Stuff like that. Uh, you need to be thinking about all these things as the input comes in. Uh, WP kisses. I'm sorry, I just call it KSS. It's gotta be KSS. Uh, this is amazing. This is fantastic. It stands for kisses, KSS, strips evil scripts. If there's anything bad in there, it rips it out. Just like that. It's magic. It's incredibly powerful. Um, the problem is you sometimes only want to pull out parts of things. And so it has an option in the function to say strip out everything there is except paragraph tags. And then maybe except links. And throw in some images. Pretty soon you've got this big array of allowed HTML tags. Which brings us to the next one. Case says post which does the same thing except it automatically allows anything allowed in a post. Anybody tried to, ever tried to paste JavaScript into the, the text editor in the admin area? Strips it right out. So WP KSS post does the same thing while allowing links and images and every other HTML tag you might want in there. Um, so there's a very strong, oops, very strong tendency for me, something I have to work on and avoid. I want to wrap everything in KSS post because it just fixes everything every time. But it's so slow. Um, anybody do much regular expressions? Yeah, pred, pred replace in PHP. They're slow because they're just doing so much math. Well. KSS is doing a whole big long series of regular expression checks. 
So a whole bunch of slow things. So it's incredibly powerful, but it is slower than the others. Now, when I say slow, it's relative. It's two hundredths of a second instead of one hundredth of a second. So, you know, don't be afraid to use it because it's going to be slow. If it's appropriate, absolutely use it. But think ahead and think, well, what others could I use? For example, escape HTML and escape uh, ATTR. Anybody have a pronunciation for that? That's attribute, actually. It's the abbreviation for attribute. Um, they're essentially the same thing. They're similar to PHP's HTML entities, but you can pass it some options to do some various things. Um, but basically what it does is say, if there is HTML, render it as HTML, or like render the HTML to the screen. So they see the brackets, they see the quotes, they see the ahref, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's ugly, but harmless and obvious. So if you're printing out something for, that you just pulled from the database and you go, whoa, what is all this JavaScript and image tags and all that's junk? right here on my web page. Oh, somebody put junk in my database. Let's go clean that up. Um, I tend to see escape attribute more often within HTML tags. So uh, it'll get wrapped around the title of a link. It'll get wrapped around the alt text of a link. So you might see several of them inside one link. Whereas I tend to see escape HTML wrapped around larger chunks of text where you just don't know what's in there. You just want to be safe. Scrub it. Escape URL. This is great because URLs are URLs. They're a very known entity. We know exactly what they can look like and what they cannot look like. Uh, it returns an empty string if not valid, so which makes it great for testing. So you can say, is this a valid URL? No? Okay, don't print. Um, but you don't want to say, you, you don't want to render a link, wrap the HT, or rate, uh, okay, let me re-say that. You don't want to render an anchor tag and wrap the link, the URL, in this escape URL, because if it's false, you're going to get, you're still going to get a link. It's just going to have the href be empty and you'll be linking to current page, whatever that is. That's ugly. You want to test ahead of time and say, is this valid? Yes, okay, then go ahead and make an anchor tag. Otherwise, don't make it at all. Uh, and we talked about array map already. Um, that's really useful when somebody says, you know, here's, here's 25 posts, print them all. You don't want to Blah. You don't want to loop through them all doing individual tests on every piece. That's horrible. Um, so, wisdom. Case test is incredibly powerful, but slow. Don't use it. Unless you need it. And then absolutely use it. Use the most specific function you can. There are dozens of those tags on those pages that I showed you. I'm leaving it up to you to go read the, read the codecs and figure them out. You don't need me to here to read the codecs for you. The principles that I'm teaching you are going to apply to every single one of them. Use the most specific one you can. Um, look at the data you have. Figure out what kind of data it is. Wrap it in the right function. You can either send it to the screen or send it to your database. Um, ha, getting ahead of myself. Read carefully what each function does because they can surprise you. For example, I would have thought that uh, escape URL would return false if it were not a URL. Instead, it returns empty. So you still get something. That's weird to me. Um, I treated it improperly for a long time and I ended up with weird tests because I'd say, is, you know, is this a, a valid URL? And it didn't return false. Like I was testing for true and it didn't return false, so I guess it's valid. That doesn't work that way. Um, and then using your tests. Here's a great example with the escape URL. Test it first, then print it. Same with an email address. Um, if it's a valid email address, then store it or print it or whatever you're gonna do. You can use an awful lot of functions for testing, uh, particularly the uh, input ones. 
the validation, not so much. No, I'm sorry, the validation is the ones. It's the uh, escaping ones that you tend to be kind of late in the game to be testing at that point. Database queries. How many people do not write your own database queries with WPDB? Oh, only one. So lots of you do it? You write your own database queries? Okay, excellent. That's good. Um, use the prepare method because it will do all kinds of validation and for you. Um, you do WPDB query and then within it you do prepare and it works just like sprintf. Um, look, I have a weird tab there. Um, you replace where you would have put in your strings or integers or whatever with these values and then you print them down here. And WPDB will just magically scrub them for you. It's awesome. Lots and lots and lots of work went into that. Did I skip one? Yes. Summary. If you are sending a variable to the user, test it. If you are taking input from the user, test it. No exceptions. Ever. This is one of the biggest lessons of this whole talk. No exceptions ever. If you have one exception, the whole thing is just as insecure if, as if you had never done it at all. Check your input, check your output, be sure what's going on. It adds some extra work. It's not so bad if you're doing it as you go, but if you have to go back and you have to refactor an entire plugin, it's a lot of work, granted. But until you do, your plugin is insecure. And what's the fun in that? A um, couple of things that I forgot to put in my slides that I want to talk to talk about uh, is when to do this. You should escape your output at the very last second. So say you get a bunch of data from your database and you're going to print it to the screen. You could escape it as soon as you get it out of the database and then later just print it. But you don't know what's going to happen between the time it comes from the database and it gets printed. You don't know if there's some uh, filter that a bad guy could get into and adjust your data. You don't know if the next developer after you is going to screw something up. It, just as you're printing it, like either echo or print, whichever religion you follow, escape your output there. Input validation, you want to validate as early as possible. So, like, from form to validation, then you can mess around with it, you can manipulate it, massage it, whatever you want to do to your data. Validate it the second you get it. Because you don't know what's going to happen between the time they hit submit on the form and the time you may validate it two functions down the way. Somebody's filtering, somebody's doing an ad action, your coworker is writing something stupid, you don't know. Validate immediately and escape at the very last second. Um, and there was one more thing I was going to say, and I forgot it. Bummer. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. As a confirmed non-developer, can I assume that the stuff that I'm downloading off of WordPress plugins and such have a lot of these safety features built in already because of the codex? No, you cannot. How do I know what's good and what isn't? Um, I know it's a real general question. Yeah, it is a real general question. Um, often, if somebody does it at all, they're probably going to do it everywhere. Not guaranteed, but... Um, I'm going to say the escape HTML function is probably one of the most commonly used. So just pull up the code in whatever text editor you feel like, even Notepad, whatever, and just do a search for that ESC underscore HTML. And if you don't find it anywhere, then they're probably not doing their job. Um, if you find, you know, you find, I don't know, six or seven of them, it depends on what the plugin is. If the plugin doesn't do any output at all, then you may not find it. 
um, if it wasn't if the plugin doesn't take any input, then you may not find those functions. Um, I'm kind of trying to stay with some of the more well-known names, like for instance, uh, WooCommerce. Yeah, I would have to assume that was. Yeah, that's. I haven't looked, but I would assume that it is that it is doing this. Um, they're they're a professional organization. If they're not doing this, then they need to stop doing WordPress. <laughs> Yeah. You were writing plugging from scratch or rewriting something. Would you tell someone to first use the the most powerful scrubber that takes a lot of time, and then if it starts with a performance problem, to then try and get a more specific one? I would not. Um, it's a pain in the butt to go back and refactor that kind of stuff, and you're probably not going to see a performance hit from just that. Uh, if your site starts to get slow, it's going to be because you don't have enough RAM or you have too much traffic or something, and not because you used WPK sets in the wrong spot. That said, it will be ever so slightly faster if you use the right one. Maybe not inherently noticeable, but it's like doing the right thing because it's the right thing, you know? You don't have to worry then about choosing the wrong one and suddenly forgot about it. Because you think you're secure, but you, you didn't choose the. Ah, uh, you didn't choose the right one. Um, that is a valid concern, and I think the only answer to that is experience. Um, they're not that hard to understand. Like, obvious. There's an obvious difference between escape H or escape URL and escape variant is email. You know, most of them are are pretty well documented, and you can tell what they're what they're doing. Other questions? Are there any tools that will actually go through your code? <gasps> That's it. Oh. That's the other thing I was going to talk about. <laughs> yes. There's uh, there's something that I actually would like to do a whole talk on. Uh, it's called PHP CS, PHP Code Standards. Um, PHP CS by itself is a very generic library. Uh, it wants a I don't know what you call it, a vocabulary. So there's a PHP CS file for Drupal, and there's one for WordPress, and there's one for Joomla, and there's one for every other project, because they each have different standards. So you get the one for WordPress, and you run it against your file. And it checks a whole bunch of stuff. It checks to make sure you're using tabs instead of spaces. It checks to make sure you have a space after if before your parentheses, and all that kind of stuff. But something it does very, very well is look at every single variable and says, are you echoing this? Is it wrapped in a sanitization function? Oh no, there you go, line 42. Um, and so it'll tell you every, fun or every variable, every line where you missed doing something you should be doing. Is that scriptable? Absolutely. I tend to run it by hand. Um, there's, a, there's a plugin for it for PHP edit? No. What's the big PHP editor everybody loves? PHP Storm. There's a plugin for PHP Storm. So as you're writing it, if you do it wrong, PHP Storm goes, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa right here. Um, but it's just a command line thing, so you can script it into whatever you want to do. Um, I dearly love it. It's amazing. It, it, it makes my code look professional. You know? I write it. I think it looks awesome. I run it through PHP CS, and there are 43 warnings and 9 errors, and I go, ah. And I go back, and I fix it all, and I go, wow, that looks like something, you know, a code sample from a book or something. It's awesome. Yes? Um, is that strictly for um, just like straight PHP files, or if you're working with like a WordPress theme where you have a mix of PHP and It's PHP only. Um, I think there are JavaScript standards for WordPress, but I don't know of a standards checker like PHPS for, for JavaScript. And of course, if you're doing CSS, Theoretically, you should be doing SAS, which is going to output awesomeness anyway. Uh, yeah? The only thing I can think of is it's not WordPress standard, but if you do something like CodeKit or something for automated libraries, they at least be able to take it if you have that JavaScript code. Okay, something like CodeKit or... CodeKit's an application, but I'm sure there's grunt libraries. Yeah, other, other automated libraries. I'm just more familiar with the code kit, even if it bad practices, not necessarily syntax errors, but right. like, you know, you 
if you're really supposed to put a sem semicolon somewhere. Sure. Because IE and other browser, you know, you may be able to get away with it except for like one version of IE. So yeah. If it doesn't completely conform, then it throws up a warning. It's pretty, it's the next best thing. Okay. Is your uh, presentation going to be on your website? Uh, yes, probably. Uh, the slides will be made available on uh, to the WordCamp. They'll be listed there. And I, after however many months, it'll be on WordPress.tv. Does anybody not know about WordPress.tv? Awesome. Oh, you don't. You don't know. All right. So uh, WordPress.tv is where all of the good WordCamp videos go. And so you can go there. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of... Yeah, uh, hundreds of WordCamp videos. In fact, uh, there are times when I have not necessarily paid as much attention as I should in a, in a session, and I console myself by the fact that two months from now I'll be able to just go watch it again. And then I don't. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.